I see that people are watching me. I see you in chat. YouTube is showing me the count of participants. Please say hi and let me know uh, your city, your country, and why are you here? Okay, who is the inner child? And there are a lot of different, different ways to describe the inner child. And the simplest way is the inner child is, is the part of your mind that was affected during your childhood. Uh, the inner child was affected by the event and usually several events, not one. And uh, that was the event that the child could not process. Child uh, does not understand why uh, a traumatic event happened to him, but he can feel the pain. Uh, child has emotions, child has feelings, and he does not know what to do with this pain, with these feelings. Uh, some people say that their childhood was not that bad. They had like a pretty happy childhood. And it's not about how bad your childhood was. It's about how did you deal with a stress situation? How did you overcome some traumatic events in your life? And siblings can go through the same experience, but deal with it differently. And they might have different childhood traumas. And as a result, they have different life when they grow up. One person might be successful and another child might become a drug addict, addict right? So because uh, the child uh, that within us, the, our inner child, so because the child, because we could not deal with some traumatic problems with the events uh, in our childhood in order to survive we create we created defensive mechanisms and filters and filter is a perception of how we look on things how we judge other people how we explain ourselves what is happening to us in our life filters are like sunglasses so when you wear a sunglasses everything you see in the specific color uh, or for example filters on your phone when you want to judge the color of your picture so filters is the same if you wear in black sunglasses you see everything in a dark color and let's say one partner wears black sunglasses and another partner wears pink sunglasses so she sees everything in pink everything is nice and bright and another person uh, sees the world in negative uh, colors right so those Two people, they cannot understand each other. This is the obstacle to life because we all have filters and our filters conflict with each other. And as you see, uh, this is the photo how the how we use filters. So we can see the same tree under different colors. Uh, example. Uh, for example, a girl had emotionally unavailable father. And emotionally unavailable means that... Um, he did not pay attention to her. Uh, he did not hug her. He did not uh, ask her about her feelings, her, her emotions. He did not compliment her. So he was cold and he was uh, emotionally unavailable. He was unavailable uh, for his little girl. And for many years, this girl had to earn his love, had to earn his attention. And now she's 25 and she uh, falls in love with a narcissistic person, selfish husband, selfish boyfriend, because she used to the, she is used to, to the idea that she has to earn his love, earn his attention. And now she's in a relationship with a selfish, selfish person and she is trying to earn his love. For her, love equal pain. And um, in order to, she cannot be with a normal person because for her it's not, it's boring. And in order to have emotions, in order to have like romantic roller coasters, she has to be with a person who does not respect her, uh, with the person with whom she has to earn his attention, she has to earn his love. Another example, uh, a father died when uh, the girl was seven years old. And now um, she cannot find the soulmate. Why? Because uh, when she lost her father, she um, 
felt a huge pain uh, in her heart, in inside of her, and she learned that um, love hurts. I cannot trust men. My father left me when I was seven, and now I cannot trust men. So when she meets a guy, she cannot go into the deep relationship. She can hang out with them, she can have a good time, but when it comes to serious relationship, when it comes to vulnerability, she cannot, she cannot go further. So she, she is 50 right now, and she cannot create a loving relationship because her childhood trauma teach her that love hurts, you cannot trust men and she wants to find a partner she wants to be happy she wants to be with a man but her fear is bigger than her her fear is so big that she does not even realize it so uh, what are obstacles to love obstacles to love is our filters and our defensive mechanisms that we created in our childhood and everyone has filters, dozen of them. Some filters are helpful and healthy, and some filters are not. Uh, the child creates filters or defensive mechanisms, and he looks to life through those filters for the rest of his life. And he teaches his kids how to use the same filters. So filters stopping us from being happy. Filters are stopping us from achieving our goals. And we had to create them in our childhood because we had to survive. We have to deal somehow with the pain and traumatic events that happened to us. But we're not children anymore. And right now we don't need uh, those filters, but we still use them. So let's talk about why it's so difficult, why it's so hard to let go of those filters. And uh, the first reason is often we can't let them go because we don't realize that we have them. We just simply don't uh, realize that we might have a trust issue or we might have a control issue. For us, it's normal. We're used to those filters. We use them every day and when people uh, say something like, you should let go of your control, you should not be so strict. A woman can say like what are you talking about so we don't know uh, that we have them that's why we cannot let go of them the second reason uh, that we don't know how we can live without filters so we know the old way and even if it's not working for us we know how to use the old way but how to live differently we don't know uh, for example, a girl used to idea that she cannot trust men and she develops uh, a mechanism where she is in control of everything. She is the responsible one. She has to control uh, her work. She has to control um, everything in, in, at her house and she becomes like a control person for everything that's happening in her life, in her relative's life, in her friend's life. And she wants to meet a successful man, but she can't. Why? Because successful man does not need a woman who is going to control his life. He does not need a woman who is going to control his house and who is going to tell him what to do. If the man is successful, if he is the leader, he is used to control himself. He is the one who likes to control, who likes to lead. And at the same time, she has uh, a defensive mechanism, a filter that's called control. So they cannot be together. And this woman, she wants to be with a strong, successful man, but she's lonely. She cannot find such men. Another example. Uh, a woman complains that her husband does not make enough money or maybe does not help her with kids. And this happens also because of her desire to control everything. Her inner child is in charge. She cannot let go of her control. She cannot relax. And her husband, he's okay with that. He has a wonderful wife who is cooking, cleaning, planning vacation, taking care of kids, making money. Yes, she complains, complains time to time, but overall he's pretty happy. He has an easy life and she is in control. This is how our filters work. We complain about something, but uh, often we create those situations. 
Let me know if you are agree in the chat. Let me know what's your thoughts about uh, those filters and if you notice those filters in your life or in your partners. How can uh, we notice? How can you notice and spot your inner child? And um, our child likes to act like a little child, like a real uh, child. And you probably saw those people. They might be in their 30s, 40s, 50s, but they act like uh, like kids, right? They create drama. So let's talk a little bit in details because when it's obvious, we can see it. But when it's hidden, it's harder to see. And I want to show you several examples and hopefully you can recognize maybe yourself or maybe your partner, or maybe your mother, father or your mm, friends. Uh, the first example is uh, people who do not take responsibility in life. Uh, usually children don't like uh, to take responsibility. They don't want to clean their toys. They don't like to do home chores. And uh, people who don't take responsibility in life, uh, they compensate. How they compensate love? Yes, how they get it? Why do they do that? Because uh, uh, their uh, defensive mechanism is if you love me you will do it for me so people who don't want to be responsible they expect other people to do things for them and for them this is a, a, a symbol of love another example uh, people who need to be reminded several times about um, about decisions, about agreement, about plans, uh, about anything. And again, this is the childish mechanism because child must be reminded about uh, his schedule. Uh, you should tell a child to go and brush their teeth, take a shower and compensation mechanisms. Why people do that? Because they need extra attention. Uh, when you remind your husband, your mother, your brother, your friend, uh, they get attention from you. So I am getting more attention every time when you remind me to do something. This is the compensation mechanism. Uh, third example, people who complain a lot or blame others. This is, uh, uh, this is I see often and you probably too. And again, if we compare to children, children like to say, this is not my fault. This is her fault. Don't blame you. Don't judge me. And compensation mechanism here is other people are bad and I'm good. So I want to feel good. I want to uh, feel great. I'm a good girl. I'm a good boy and other people are bad. So people who complain a lot, they do not accept the fact that uh, they might be wrong or they might make a mistake. And this is normal. Adult person, the mature person, uh, he knows that uh, everybody can make a mistake those people they don't um, because they have to compensate uh, the love that they did not receive during the childhood they, so they have to prove themselves first of all that they are good so other people are bad this is not my fault i did everything right another example uh, people who have hard time following rules and kids hate rules right uh, Kids uh, break rules uh, all the time and uh, people, adults who mm, don't follow the rules, uh, they uh, do it because they want to show the world and themselves again that they are better than everybody else. So rules uh, do not apply to me. I'm above the rules. I am better. Again, this is the defensive mechanism to compensate lack of childhood love. Third example, uh, people who do not take care of their body, people who do not uh, go to gym, people who do not eat healthy food, uh, like kids. Kids like pizza, ice cream, hot dog, um, fast food and it's very hard for the child to stop himself from uh, cake or to stop himself and say no this is a bad food for me I'm not gonna eat it but for adults it should be normal adults should understand that uh, the fast food is bad um, that you should take care of your body you should do exercise 
and people who don't do it uh, they again using the filter the childish mechanism uh, that says I believe in magic my body will be healthy anyway I believe in magic bad stuff is not gonna happen to me okay uh, the next example people are looking for a quick fix people without patience um, why are they doing it? Because they believe that miracle exists. A child uh, mechanism uh, that miracle exists. And a girl came to me and she said, I want to get my boyfriend back. Uh, give me some advice. Give me some uh, tricks. How can I get him back? Again, this is the childish mechanism. The person is not a purse. You, can, you cannot go back to the store and buy your boyfriend again. So if your boyfriend left you, the question is why uh, did he do that? Why do you want him back? And uh, when you are asking yourself about uh, um, those reasons, you can understand yourself better. Do you really want him back? Or maybe you don't want to be lonely. Or maybe you have a fear that you're not going to find anybody better. Or maybe you have a fear that... Um, you're gonna become old and lonely so when the person is saying I want my boyfriend back it's like a child asking for the toy like I want my toy back and adult um, a healthy adult a, a mature adult is not gonna ask those questions uh, okay a uh, question Adrian uh, you are saying uh, hello Elena my name is Adrian welcome I live in North Hollywood uh, I am a recent subscriber to your channel. I've enjoyed some of your videos recently and wanted to say thank you for providing your knowledge. You're welcome. Thank you very much for saying those words because this is extremely important to me. I want to know that I'm not just talking to myself and when I see comments, comments like yours, uh, of course I feel great and of course I want to create more. Thank you for coming. Okay, next example. Uh, people who are late or who cannot wait in line again like kids people uh, kids cannot stay at one place for 30 minutes and compensation mechanisms here uh, is like pay attention to me I am late I'm like a Cinderella who came uh, to the ball as a last guest I'm in the center of the universe look at me everybody pay attention so people who are always late they just want to get extra attention, extra, extra love. Uh, they want people to notice them. They want to be the center of the group. Uh, next example, people who cannot control their emotions. Uh, again, uh, let's compare uh, kids, right, with kids. Uh, when a child is sad, he's crying. When a child is mad, he's screaming. When a child is tired, he can cry and scream at the same time. Uh, a lot of adults create trauma and act based on their emotions. And we're going to talk more about this on the webinar number four, when we're going to talk about healthy boundaries or how to say no. So when a person acts on his emotions, it's not an adult reaction. It's a childish reaction. And the compensation mechanism here is... Uh, if you love me, you will accept me the way I am. Everybody wants the, uh, their partner to accept them the way they are. Uh, but a lot of time it's not possible because uh, a lot of time people act unacceptably. People uh, behave uh, childish and this is not what you have to accept from your partner or your partner should accept from you. So uh, people who cannot uh, control their emotions and their feelings, people who create drama, uh, they do it because they want um, to see that you love them. Basically, if you love me, you accept me. Next example, people who cannot create plans for the future, who cannot manage their time. It's like uh, if you ask a seven years old uh, to plan your vacation. Of course, the child cannot do this. So the people who um, cannot create plans, who cannot keep their words, who cannot follow your agreement, 
uh, this is uh, their, their inner child. Their inner child is saying like, no, I'm the baby here. You should take care of me. You should do everything for me. Why did not you remind me about that? Okay, so we made an agreement. So what? I changed my mind. This is the inner child uh, who who is stalking inside and you see the actions outside stubborn people uh, stubborn people who don't want to consider other people opinion who don't want uh, to discuss it and if you're gonna uh, discuss your opinion with them and if they not agree they're gonna become angry and they will try to do everything to prove that they are right and the compensation mechanism here is I'm uh, at the center of the universe. I'm the masterpiece. Uh, you should love me. You should agree with me. Uh, I am uh, right and you are wrong. And I'm not going to discuss it because you're not going to understand it. A uh, few more examples. People who don't know what they want. Uh, children usually don't know what they want. They just learning uh, their desires. They just trying to understand themselves. And I have a stepdaughter and she likes to ask her father uh, questions like this. Dad, I forgot what uh, part of chicken do I like? Do I like white meat or dark meat? Or she can say something like, uh, how do you think, uh, am I going to like this ice cream flavor? Or uh, do you remember, did I try this fish before? Uh, did I like it? And adults who did not heal their inner child, they also do similar things. For example, a wife who wants... Uh, to get advice from her husband in everything or a woman who calls her friends often and discuss with them every single decision and again compensation mechanisms here is if you love me you must know me you must know what I like and a good husband should uh, be a psychic and he should know what his wife wants he should know why she is upset or angry. Uh, he should not ask her. She should not explain it to him. Uh, he just have to read her mind and he must um, predict her desires, her wishes. She, he must to understand what she wants. Again, uh, this woman has an inner child who is asking to be healed and that's why she is doing it because she wants to see that you love her. This is an awkward, awkward way of um, receiving love. Another example, people who are afraid of a change and uh, people who know that uh, uh, the way they live their life might be not the best one and they're not reaching their goals they're not uh, successful and uh, the situation is no longer working for them the relationship is no longer working and because they are afraid of a change uh, a woman can say like yes i know um my relationship is not gonna work my relationship is falling apart uh, my boyfriend treats me badly. We don't have sex anymore. We fight all the time. But I don't want to be lonely. But I don't want to leave him because I'm afraid to be lonely. Because I don't know what's going to be uh, if I will leave him. I'm afraid of the future. So I will be in this relationship. Yes, they are painful. Yes, I'm not happy. But at least I know... Uh, what it is at least I can uh, like I, I got I get used to my husband I know how to deal with him and the compensation mechanism is getting attention through pity she has a great uh, topic to complain about and she can discuss uh, for hours with her friends about her selfish boyfriend she can um, feel uh, that people can relate to her and feel sorry for her and she receives a lot of emotional support uh, if she will leave her husband she will have no topic no nothing to complain about 
and she might lose uh, the attention of her girlfriends. That's why she is doing it. She uh, she does not want um, to suffer, but at the same time, she is getting a lot of benefits from this suffering relationship. And um, final example uh, is about people who have issues. They know that they have issues, but they don't want to work on them. So a guy, for example, might know that he has a trust issues or he cannot commit to a relationship, but he does not want to go to therapy. He does not want to discuss it with his girlfriend. He does not want to attend any relationship workshops. And again, uh, his compensation mechanisms is uh, I will get more attention from my girlfriend because every time when I'm leaving her, every time when I'm not, um, when, when I am not um, telling her about uh, our future, she is asking me again and again and again. Yes, sometimes I feel um, that she's bugging me, but every time she bugs me, I am getting attention. I am, uh, I know that she loves me. I see that she wants to be with me through her arguments, through our conflicts. The, the guy is thinking like he did not receive enough love in his childhood. He's not thinking about it. It happens uh, subconsciously. So because he did not receive enough love through his childhood, this is the way for him getting extra attention. Uh, when a person wants to be perfect, uh, he develops a good girl syndrome or good boy syndrome. And uh, um, I personally uh, had that syndrome and I always wanted to have good grades in school because my parents were proud of me when I got a good grades. I want to be the best so my parents be proud of me. I was not, I was afraid to disappoint my mom. My father left me when I was 11 and I did everything I could to be the best just um, to make sure that my mom is going to be proud of me. And uh, an adult person understands that many times in life you don't have to be perfect. I'm not perfect and I'm okay with this. But when you have uh, a childhood trauma, when you have a pain inside of you, you are using those um, mechanisms, those filters from your childhood in your adult life. And for example, in this case, when, um, when I had a good girl syndrome, I was 25 and I got married uh, and um, I was, uh, I spent many, many years uh, in a toxic relationship because I was trying to be a good girl. The good girl cannot leave uh, a toxic husband. The good girl cannot um, ask for help. She is the perfect one. And the compensation mechanism uh, here was, of course, I'm a good one. And one day he will see that I'm the good one and he will understand and treat me with respect. He will understand and see how amazing I am. So again, the way to receive love, not now, but somewhere in the future. People who cannot say no or who cannot understand no. Again, it's like kids. When you say to your child no, they, uh, a lot of time, they're not going to follow you no. They will complain. They will cry. They will say why not. They might create drama. So for children, you have to say no several times until they're going to learn uh, your rules. And um, same mechanism. If the child did not learn no in his childhood, then... Um, when a person is gonna be an adult, he's not gonna um, respect other people's privacy. He's not gonna um, understand the word no. And the compensation mechanism here is I want to be a child. I want to be a child. I want you to accept and love me the way I am. Uh, you should love me no matter what, no matter if I cross your boundaries, no matter if I take your stuff, you should love me anyway. And uh, another, another way when people cannot say no, other people uh, is going to use you. So if you cannot say no, you, you say yes every time when your boss is asking you to stay late at work. People who cannot say no, they cannot ask for help too. So this is like a two-way 
mechanism. Uh, you cannot say no and you cannot ask for help. So people are going to use you. Uh, people who don't follow their own decisions, people who just, for example, people, a person decides to eat healthy, to um, start doing exercises every morning, or, um, you know, person saying that I'm going to be on a diet for two weeks, I want to lose weight. And the person cannot manage it for five days, or maybe even for three days. And usually those people, uh, why uh, they cannot manage it? Because they create unrealistic goals. They put too much expectations on themselves. And of course, they put too much expectations on others. And the compensation mechanism here is like, I'm special. I can create real unrealistic goals. I can be a superhero. You know, I have a plan to lose 10 pounds within two weeks. I can do it. I will show the world that I'm special. Um, if uh, everybody is uh, just regular and I'm special, um, I'm not as everybody else. Uh, let me know if you recognize yourself or somebody um, that you know. And if you enjoyed this video so far, please click like and share it on your social media. This way I will know that I'm not talking to myself and I will know that you're here and you like what I'm sharing with you. How can we recognize the inner child within us? Uh, the simplest way is to listen what other people are saying. There are specific words that can signal you that the person is person is using the defensive mechanism, they use, the person is using filters. And those words are, it's not fair. This is unfair. People who say this is unfair, it's their inner child um, words. An adult understands that life is not always fair. Fair is not even the right word to use in adulthood. Uh, if something happens to you, if something happens not as you planned it, an adult can evaluate the situation, evaluate the reasons why this happened to him and can make a conclusion how to do, how to do it better next time. But when the person is saying it's not fair, this is unfair and not going into any evaluation, I just, but just complaints, this is not an adult uh, is talking. This is the inner child words. Uh, another phrase is like, why me? Why me? Why this happened to me? And again, an adult, uh, he will either know why this happened to him or an adult will not ask this question. Sometimes, uh, I would say even often, uh, this question does not have an answer. Sometimes you don't know why, it's just happened. Uh, and if you don't know why, you just move on. But if you think and you find the reason, then you, you're not going to complain about a life. You're not going to complain about fate. You will find the way how to do it better next time. And instead of complaining, uh, why not? Why me? You're going to focus on what can you do to change the situation. And if the person is not focusing on the... Uh, results, if the person is not focusing on how to do it better, then uh, the person is going to complain about life, complain about other people, complain about the government, about the laws, about the taxation. And why me is not a phrase for an adult. This is the inner child phrase. The next one, you have to. The inner child always expects something. Everyone uh, has to do uh, something for him, especially uh, he expects a lot of things from the partner, from the friends, from family members. For example, a woman uh, who expects that her man will make her laugh and make her happy, right? You're my husband, you have to make me happy. Uh, kids sometimes can say like, oh, you're my parent, you should make me happy. You should uh, do what I ask. You're my parent. Uh, kids expecting from parents to satisfy their needs, to satisfy their desires. And when you hear this phrase from an adult, it means that 
his or her inner child is in pain and the inner child is asking you to do something. A mother who expects her children to hold her adult children to call her at least three times a day. Like, I'm your mother, you don't call me. Uh, a good son should call his mother like two, three times a week. You never call, you never ask how, how's my life. Again, this is not like an adult mother. This is the uh, inner child's mother. Uh, a woman, a mother who expects her daughter to share all her secrets with her. And if she does not share it with her, then uh, mother gets very sad and she might say, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. You are the bad daughter. This is not the way how I raised you. And she becomes a manipulator and she will try to get this extra attention from her daughter. And the phrase is, you have to. The next phrase is like, I don't have to, you have to, but I don't. And the inner child expects that other people will do something for him, but he's not going to do anything in return. Uh, for example, a woman who does not want to play with her kids or spend time with them. She can say, uh, mommy's tired, uh, mommy's busy. Mommy uh, does not feel good, you, but you should love your mommy. You should understand that your mommy is tired. Uh, you should be nice to your mother. You should behave well. So she is expecting from children a lot of things, but in return, she is not giving them uh, enough love, enough attention. And uh, these children will grow up and they gonna, they, they will not be able to mature they will not be able to create happy, healthy relationship because they did not get enough love. So do you see how this mechanism is going through generations from mother to children, from children to their children? Another example, a father who leaves his family and believes that his kids will be better without him. Uh, my parents divorced when I was 11 and when I, uh, I, my father moved to another city. He did not call me, he did not um, visit me, he did not send any gifts, anything for my birthday. I did not, uh, he, he just disappeared. When I was 16, I have met my father and I asked him, I said like, why you never called, not even on my birthday? And he told me this, he said, uh, I thought this is better for you. I thought that if I'm going to visit you, it's going to be more painful. So I decided that when you grow up, you will understand it. Again, uh, you have to understand me, but I don't have to do anything for you, right? So the father basically is saying, you are my child and you have to understand me. Uh, I could not create a relationship with your mother. Our marriage was falling apart. So I decided to move to another city. You have to understand me but I'm not going to do anything for you. This is the inner child. This is a selfish mechanism of the inner child. Another example, a father who visits kids twice a month instead of raising them. So instead of race, uh, instead of paying attention, uh, spending time with your kids, instead of uh, raising your kids, a father becomes like a weekend father. So I'm a good one. I'm going to take kids to the movie. I'm going to have fun with them. I'm going to play with them. And the mother is going to be the bad one because she's going to raise them. She's going to teach them. She's going to say no to them. And I'm going to be a vocational father. I'm the good one. You should love me the way I am. I'm not going to teach you. I'm not going to spend time with you only for fun stuff. Uh, another example, a grandmother or grandfather who spoiled uh, grandkids and breaks the rules that parents create. Uh, uh, a grandmother can say something like, oh, I don't have to uh, teach your kids. I don't have to raise your kids. You should do it. And she is right. Parents should teach their kids. Parents should be responsible for uh, the kids, for their kids, right? But at the same time, grandmother does not have the right to break the rules because when she's breaking the rules that mother, father created, 
uh, the kids is not going to follow those rules and it's going to be a conflict. So the grandmother who is saying, I want to be a good one. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to follow your rules. I don't have to teach kids. I'm going to spoil kids. They have to love me. And in order for them to love me, I have to spoil them. Uh, another phrase of the inner child is why. Why this is happening to me? Why me? I don't understand why, 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 why. I think we already spoke about why. Yes, why me? It was the second. Okay, so next one, moving on. When we use baby names, when a woman calls her husband, bunny, babe, my sweetheart, and it sounds so cute, it sounds so nice. And when you hear those words, you think, oh my God, they have such a gentle feelings towards each other. And then uh, this woman comes to the therapy and she's uh, asking why my bunny cannot make money or why my sweetheart uh, has to stay late at work and help others because he's a sweetheart. He cannot say no. He has to stay at work late. Uh, and your bunny is not making money because he's a bunny. A little child cannot make money. Or um, she's saying, oh, my babe uh, cannot, um, cannot ask for promotion at work because he's your babe. He's a baby. Baby cannot compete uh, in an adult world. Baby cannot ask for promotion. So when you call your husband, baby, bunny, sweetheart, honey, um, you are, um, you're putting an anchor on him. He's not a man anymore. He's bunny. He's not a successful leader. He's your honey. And when you call your man, uh, those words day after day, again and again, he's getting used to this to this name, to this role. Uh, uh, and I know all, all of you have a question. Uh, so how should you call your man? He has a name. Call your bunny, honey, sweetheart by his name. Do not diminish your partner. The relationship with your inner child. Uh, I want you to understand that your inner child is not your enemy. Your inner child is a part of you who is asking to be healed, who is screaming, who wants to get a love, who wants to feel safe, who wants to receive support. And we all have inner child. No matter if you're 30, 50, or 60, or 70, we all have inner child. And the person might be successful at work, might be a great, grand, great friend, uh, but when it comes to personal life, the person is not happy. For example, a woman in her 60s cannot create a loving relationship because she believes in a fairy tale. When it comes to relationship, her inner child is coming out and she still believes in fairy tale. She believes that one day her Mr. Right, her Prince Charming will come, sweep her from her feet and they will live happily ever after. She does not want to accept the idea that she has to work on herself and she has to work on the relationship. Even if you look in the fairy tales, even if you look in the Disney movies, before fairy, uh, before happily after comes, there are a lot of uh, challenges. There are a lot of obstacles that Prince Charming and the princess have to overcome. So ha happily ever after happens only at the end. But before the prince has fight his uh, um, his fears has to be strong, has to learn how to keep his word. A princess usually uh, does something like uh, Ariel. Uh, in She was living you know, under the water and she, in order to be happy, in order to meet the prince, she had to um, say goodbye to her tail. She has to go through pain, through fear. So in order to find the prince charming, you have to work on yourself. And uh, same for the man. If you want to be with a princess, with an amazing woman, you have to overcome your fear. You have to learn how to be responsible. You have to learn how to be brave, how to be um, the strong man that uh, she will fall in love with. And um, a woman who is 16, who cannot... Uh, 
create a loving relationship, she can say something like, uh, love should come naturally. Uh, you should not force uh, the love. You should not force the relationship. And I'm not talking about forcing. Your partner, he should not be a psychic. He cannot read your mind and he cannot understand and accept you the way you are. This is a fairy tale. Uh, if you want him to accept you the way you are, then you have to become acceptable. You have to be that person. You have to be a princess a pri uh, or a prince charming. Then uh, another person will fall in love with you and accept you the way you are. Uh, the filter, the biggest filter that uh, women have called Prince Charming. And who is the Prince Charming in the real life? A man who has a, um, a car, because Prince has a horse, right? And not just like all the horse, he has a white, nice horse. So the real Prince in real life should have um, at least a nice car. Um, maybe not like the most expensive car, but it should be a um, good uh, good brand, right? Then he should have uh, his uh, royal land. And um, a royal land, he might be a businessman, he might have his company, his own company, or he might have uh, a good career. Then he becomes a prince charming. A prince charming offers his princess uh, to become his wife. So uh, a modern prince is a man who uh, is not afraid of commitment, who is not afraid of exclusive relationship. Not just let him go out and see what's going to happen next. No, this man, he wants to have a family. He wants to be serious. He wants to have a meaningful life. And at the same time, he's not going to marry uh, just anybody else. He wants to be with the princess. And the princess is the one who has a nice figure. Uh, she uh, is not overweight. She, when she came to see him, she looked amazing. She was very, wearing a nice dress. She had a nice haircut. She uh, had a nice makeup. She uh, knows how to take care of the family, right? She, uh, the Cinderella, she was working for years, learning uh, how to create a nice atmosphere at home. She never complains. Cinderella is not the complaining uh, woman. She's not a drama queen. She knows how to keep her emotions. She knows how to be in touch with herself. She was singing, she was dancing. So a woman who knows how to have fun, how to enjoy life. A woman who is not waiting for the Prince Charming to save her from all her problems. No, she's bringing joy into the relationship. This is your um, fairy tale in a real life. The Prince Charming is a successful businessman or successful person who has a great career, uh, who is responsible, who is honest, who is brave. And the princess is a woman who takes care of herself, who looks great, who knows how to present herself, who is not complaining, who is bringing joy and happiness into the relationship. Then boom, this is your happily ever after. But in reality, we have inner child and our inner child is... Uh, asking to be healed and one inner child meets another inner child and they both expect uh, too much from their partner they both expect unconditional love for unconditional support and as a result they cannot fulfill each other's expectations and as a result we have two broken hearts so who is the inner child is it a boy or is it a girl and we all have two children inside of us. We have a little boy and a little girl. We have father and mother. We took something from the father and something from the mother. And we have male and female qualities within us. Things like bravery, responsibility, ability to be successful in life, ability to create plans. Uh, for the future, ability to overcome fear, ability to make money. Uh, those are all male qualities. And if our inner boy was hurt, 
then we have problems with making money, we have problems finding job, we have a lot of fears and low self-esteem and low self-confidence. And our inner girl reflects our female quality, no matter if you are male or female. If you cannot accept your body, if you cannot control your emotions, if you cannot understand your desires, if you cannot be happy and uh, joyful, then it means that your inner girl did not receive enough love and protection. And you have to work uh, on your inner girl. And if you have problems in your sexual life, let's say you cannot uh, have an orgasm, it's a very common problem for women, then uh, you should work on healing your inner boy first. Why? Because if you cannot um, experience an orgasm, it means that you cannot relax, you cannot be vulnerable. And in order to be vulnerable, you should trust your partner. When you work on your inner boy, your inner boy becomes stronger, uh, then he grows into your inner man, and then your self-confidence, self-esteem is growing. Then your little girl can relax. So when uh, a woman is protected by her man, she can relax, she can feel happy, she can be feminine, she can take care of herself, and she becomes sexy. She becomes sexy and she can enjoy her sex life. Uh, and next, uh, the next question that I hear a lot is uh, how can we move forward without healing uh, the inner child? Or can we even move forward uh, without healing the inner child? And the answer is no. Uh, no, you can't. Because your mechanisms, your defensive mechanisms, your filters are so strong, they're not going to let you move forward. You're going to be stuck in your old behavior patterns. And only by healing your inner child, you can create healthy boundaries. You can develop new reaction. You can work on your self-esteem. You can work on self-acceptance and self-love. Without this, you will be stuck in your old habits, in your old patterns, and in your childish beliefs. And life is moving forward. And if you're not moving forward with life, it means that you stuck at the same level but in reality the life is moving forward and you are moving down deeper and deeper and deeper uh, and within years your uh, old behavior patterns becomes even stronger and one day it might be too late too late to have a successful career too late to have a family with three, with three kids too late to quit smoking because you have cancer, too late to start exercising because you already have diabetes or heart problems, right? So if you have goals, dreams, desires, and you don't know how to achieve them, or maybe you tried, but it wasn't successful, in 99%, it means that your inner child is not letting you because he's afraid of something. He's afraid of failure. He's afraid of success. He's afraid of unknowing. Uh, maybe he is in, def in his defensive shell. So without healing your inner child, uh, you cannot become a happy, healthy, successful person. And what does your inner child want? Your inner child want only two things. This is the good, <laughs> good thing that he or she wants only two things. He wants to be loved and he wants to be safe. Uh, let's talk a little bit about love, right? Uh, we are craving, we have cravings for unconditional love. We want to be loved unconditionally by our partners and by our best friends. And unfortunately, other people cannot fulfill the pain that we have inside. The pain of the inner child, uh, nobody can fulfill except you. Only you can connect, only you can understand, and only you can hear your inner child. Only you can teach him what the love is. Only you can give him attention, care, and support that he needs. Other people will try if they love you right if they want to make you happy they will try but it's not possible this is expectations that nobody can 
achieve nobody can fulfill only you can connect with your inner child calm him down and ask him to put his guards down so you can create a new healthy boundaries new healthy defensive mechanism and you can start trusting other people you can start achieving your goals you can um, be free and be more happy be happier and the second thing that your inner child wants is to be safe the inner child sees uh, this world as a scary place and he um, he is afraid to trust other people uh, he prefers to follow the familiar path uh, even if it's not gonna make him happy uh, the path is familiar and this is uh, something that he's gonna hold on he's gonna hold on to his old mechanism because he's used to them and he does it only because he wants to protect you he wants to protect you from pain that he hidden inside him many many years ago when you were a little boy or a little girl okay so uh, on the next webinar next thursday we're gonna talk about four steps of childhood we're gonna talk about four important steps that we all went through and uh, we're gonna talk about what type of love what type of care and attention we need on those steps and you can understand better on which step you did not get enough love and you can investigate your childhood and you will it's gonna be more clear for you why you're making this or that decisions why you're facing this or that problem in your life and if you don't want to miss it it's gonna be here on youtube next thursday at 9 a.m pacific standard time and below the video you can click on the link and subscribe it's absolutely free and i will send you an email notification with the link and um, now I would like to talk uh, to you about healing, how to heal your inner child. And I would like uh, to invite you to eight weeks of online workshops. And online workshop is going to be from October 10th to November 28th. So the first four weeks is free in August. Then in September, it's going to be a little break i'm going out of country and then when i get back we're gonna start the workshop even if you're not gonna come to the workshop you're welcome to come for free webinars so total we're gonna have 12 weeks of healing the first four is the theory including today and you can come uh, to the free webinar you can ask your questions and then if you decided to join me for the real workshop where we're gonna do exercises meditation we're not gonna just talk about why or how we're gonna heal the inner child so then it's gonna be eight weeks of uh, practical training online and all sessions will be recorded and the mail to all participants so if you cannot join us online you can watch it later and do all the exercises at a time convenient for you and who should attend this training you should attend this training if you want to learn how to understand yourself how to understand your true desire uh, if you want to overcome fears and anxieties if you want to work on your self-confidence and self-esteem if you're tired of being a victim and if you want to stop sacrificing yourself for others if you want to learn or attract love and abundance in your life, if you want to be successful, if you want to attract new opportunities in life and use them for the maximum result. Some people, they don't see opportunities, but some people do, but they don't know how to use them. Uh, we're gonna learn how to accept yourself, how to accept your inner child, how to stop fighting with the world and with the people that you love. Uh, if you want to free yourself from constant worries and start enjoying life and simply if you want to allow yourself to have profound fulfilling happy life then welcome to the training this is gonna be great uh, opportunity for you to heal your inner child and the training will have three parts if you would I will sh 
give you some overview of the training but if you would like to see uh, topics and breakdowns day by day uh, below the video you can find the link and uh, you can go to my website and I listed uh, the schedule of the training uh, so it's gonna be three parts the first part will be about how to connect your inner child before we're gonna heal your inner child we need to connect with him we need to understand him we need to feel your inner child inside and then we're gonna fill him with love give him protection and low uh, lower uh, his anxiety level the second part is gonna be work uh, with anger anger management anger was prohibited in our childhood so we cannot uh, say no, we cannot uh, create a healthy boundaries because we cannot allow ourselves to be angry. And there are usually two mechanisms. Either we cannot, uh, either we can, either we hide the anger inside or people are arguing all the time. So this is both like the first one is when you cannot allow yourself to feel uh, you know uh, rage to feel anger and another one is when you cannot control it and we're gonna talk about both situation and we're gonna do some specific exercises how we can release anger and transform it in order to achieve our goals in order to use it in a healthy way to protect our boundaries we will work on shoulda woulda coulda feelings um, feelings that I have to, I must to, we're gonna learn and do exercises how to free yourself from those old habits, old um, behavior patterns, and how to accept yourself for who you are and how to raise your self-esteem. And also it's gonna be very important week where we're gonna talk and do exercises. Mm, uh, how to overcome our hidden childhood fears we all have fears and some fears we don't really even realize but they are stopping us from being successful and from uh, from finding our soulmate or from creating happy loving relationship sometimes fears are so deep that we cannot even see them and um, during the workshop we're gonna work on those hidden fear fears and it's going to be an exercise that I love and uh, I think everybody should do it uh, multiple times. The exercise called meeting with your inner monster. We all have inner monsters, some fears that we don't realize and we need to face those fears. We need to meet our fears in order to calm, calm, your, calm your inner monster down. So when your monster can relax, he can enjoy life and you can be free. And the third part will be about mm, boundaries, how to say no. We're gonna learn specific phrases, Doing, we're gonna do specific exercise to practice those ways, how to talk to rude people, how to say no, how to uh, create a distance and uh, how to free yourself and how to be happy. And there are four ways uh, how you can participate four packages first one is the basic package it's going to be five weeks of training so you don't have to go for all eight weeks you can go just for five weeks and skip the part about the anger fear and um, healthy boundaries uh, with this package this is the most affordable package you can see the um, prices on the screen or you can go on my website link below this video and see the prices there uh, with this package, you come online, you ask your questions during the live broadcast. And we're going to have eight broadcasts uh, on Thursdays. The next package is full package. So uh, this package includes eight weeks of training, the whole training. It's a little bit more expensive, but the price is also affordable. And again, you uh, do the exercise at home you come to the live broadcast you ask your questions we do exercise together and then you prepare for the next week uh, the third package is premium package and i highly recommend this package uh, it includes all the benefits from the full package plus the ability to submit your questions by email this is 
this is a, a great package for those who cannot attend live broadcast. Uh, if you are planning to watch the recordings, then you should choose this package because with this package, you can send all your emails by all your questions by email. You don't have to wait for the next broadcast and I can give you uh, individual reply. I can modify maybe exercise for you based on your feedback. This is one of the uh best packages in if you want to go deeper if you want to um, if you want um, to customize your training a little bit based on your situation and the fourth package is the deepest way uh with the maximum result is the vip package and here is all the benefits from the premium package plus you get seven private one and one on one session with me uh, we're going to meet once a week, we're going to meet online and uh, this package uh, usually gives you 10 times deeper and faster result. And during private sessions, you will not only work on the training topics, but we also can discuss question situations and feelings that you will have during those eight weeks. We can discuss your family, we can discuss uh, uh, your problems at work, we can go uh, deeper uh, and investigate and evaluate and heal your inner child. And I will give you, each week I will offer you new exercise that's specifically going to be selected for you in order to speed up your healing process. And of course I have discounts and everybody is welcome to use them special offers and discounts and if you invite a friend then you and your friend will receive 25 percent off each when you both sign up together uh, if you don't have a friend no problem you can get five percent discount for each link on social media if you post uh, the information about the training if you just share uh, this video or the link to the training on your social media, you're going to get 5% uh, for each social media. Let's say Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram. Uh, what's the first one? Um, your favorite one. And if you don't want to share this information, if you somehow don't feel comfortable sharing on your social media, then I have early bird discounts. And if you register before August 10th, you receive 20% off. Then August 17, 15%, 24th, 10%, and 31st, 5% discount. So the sooner that you act, the more money you're going to save. And the last question is how to register. And uh, you can register using four options. Uh, you can fill out the form on my website. You can send me an email. I will leave the link, uh, the email address below the video. You can contact me uh, via Facebook or Instagram. All links will be below. And I want to say thank you for joining me today. And if you like this video, please uh, click like, give me like, uh, let me know that you are here, that you support me. And of course, subscribe to my channel, share these videos with your friends on your social media. It means a lot to me. And again, my name is Elena Semenek and this is Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. Okay, see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.